Well, happy Monday. For Mindset Mondays today, we're gonna to talk about how to crush your insecurities. Okay, so first take your finger, slide it over, and hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so you'll get notified when I do these videos. And stay till the end and grab my email address and send me an email, tell me that you're in because there's content and things that we can't talk about here on YouTube because of the censors. And so that's where I'm gonna have some free reports and some things coming out this week, in fact. So get on uh, the email list, no spam or ads or anything like that. So let's talk about insecurities, okay? Um, that's something that guys don't like to admit that they have, guys don't wanna talk about it, and yet it cripples their ability to do stuff, it hinders your ability to accomplish your goals and to, to do things that you wanna do and to be happy and all that good, you know, all that stuff, right? Like you just having insecurities causes you to react in ways that are not productive. So how do we crush insecurities? Well, first of all, you gotta understand where insecurity is coming from. So insecurity is coming from one of these three things, okay? It's either because you are, you're not confident in your abilities or you're not confident in the direction, okay, that you're going or the decisions you're making or you're afraid to lose something. So you're afraid to lose something, lose what you have or whatever, you're not confident in the direction and you're not confident in, the in your own ability. These are where insecurities come from, all right? So let's take an example. Let's say you're insecure about your looks. You're insecure about the way you look, so you don't want to really approach women and talk to them because you're insecure about that. Or, you know, you're a woman, you're insecure about your, your appearance, and so you don't want to go to so some certain social events, or maybe you don't, it prevents you from wanting to go to a job interview or whatever. Okay. So you got to identify which one of those three things this insecurity is coming from. All right. So... If you're, let's say, not confident in how you look, well, let's look at it. Are you afraid to lose something that you have? Is that the reason behind it? Probably not, right? Are you afraid or you're not confident about the direction you're going or the decision you're making? You know, that's probably not it either. So if you're insecure about the way you look, for example, then maybe you're, you're not confident in your ability, okay? So you're not confident in your actual physical appearance, you think other people are gonna perceive you a certain way. So that could be rational or irrational, right? But how can we solve that? Well, maybe you put a plan together to up your level of appearance, all right? So maybe you do a little bit of a makeover. Maybe you talk to a coach or a friend that knows how to put himself or herself together really well and change your look. Maybe you start hitting the gym more often or getting more physically fit because you don't look, your body doesn't look the way that you want it to. See, these are how, this is how you attack this insecurity problem in this case is that you work through and make your ability or your appearance better, okay? You also want to challenge the rationale of that statement because sometimes that statement is rational or it's not rational you know and so this is where you want to get social proof some other opinions but not necessarily opinions of people that are random or don't matter you know get opinions from people whose um input you value and you trust you always want to be careful whose opinions you are looking for, right? Or you're taking advice from. So, so that would be a way to challenge the rationality of it. But what you do is you do actions to attack which one of these three things it is. And in this case, you weren't confident in an ability. So you do actions to attack that, meaning that you look max or look maximize your looks. You maximize your, your health and your appearance. You get advice and a plan on how to do that, and you get some outside opinions that you trust about these things, and you, and you take yourself up a, a notch or two or five or ten, right? 
And so this will then solve this insecurity problem you have regarding how you look, okay? So this is not like brainwashing yourself or just saying a bunch of positive thoughts or any of that woo-woo BS self-helpy stuff that just really doesn't work. You know what I mean? You can tell yourself BS all day long and at the end of the day, part of you always knows that it's, that it's BS, right? And so instead of BSing yourself or getting into the woo-woo success, positive thinking stuff, which not that positive thinking or positive thoughts are bad, but are talking lacking that rationale, right? So you attack this from a point of rationality and you attack it from a point of action. And this is how you legitimately cure or solve these insecurities that you might have, okay, through action and through object rationa objective rationality. Another tip, the last part of this is this, which is that you're going to, your mind is designed to help you avoid pain with my terrible handwriting, not necessarily achieve pleasure, okay? So you're designed to, your, your brain is designed to protect you and to help you survive, not optimize your success, all right? So going after something for pleasure or a positive outcome doesn't always work, particularly if there's pain that might be involved and your brain and your mind is going to want to avoid the actions to get you to the goal because of the risk of having pain to get there, right? So if there's a risk of, of experiencing pain to get to the goal, all right, which would, which would allow you to achieve the pleasure of achieving that goal, your mind is actually designed to pull you away from that, all right? And this is why it's hard sometimes to discipline yourself to do the right kinds of actions to get what you want. So now you add insecurity into that or a lack of confidence and ability or you're not sure if the plan is right or the direction's right or, or yeah, I don't want to take this risk. I'm afraid to lose what I have. You know what I mean? Then what you end up with is a situation where you're not achieving what you want because you're avoiding the pain, all right? The potential pain of losing or the potential pain of just not a failing of, you know, that, that pain, pain you would feel from the failure or from whatever that consequence is of not succeeding or, or achieving what you want. So what you can do is do some mindset work, okay, a little meditation or journal work and focus on and list what would be painful about not achieving this goal, all right? So for example, if you're not confident about your appearance and so you don't approach members of the opposite sex, for example, because you're just not confident about that, and then you resist doing all the things you would need to do to lose that insecurity, you know, and do some actionable items to make yourself look better and feel better. You know, you, you, you do all that stuff. So what, what you would do to counter that is you want to list the risk of not, not making yourself look better and having the confidence to approach the opposite sex. So that risk could be that you never get in a good relationship. You know, that risk could be that your, you know, your sex life is non-existent or terrible, you know, and, and keep on, you know, you never, you don't achieve happiness with a, a, a sexual partner or a relationship partner. And so, you know, these are things that would be big negatives if you didn't, you know, lose insecurity, maximize yourself and have that confidence and belief in your attractiveness or for example, using that as an example, right? And so you list all of the potential pain, you know, and all of the potential and you focus on that intensely every single day for a while, you know, do it for like a month spend 10 minutes in meditation or journal writing, focusing intensely on the pain that you will experience if you do not do the action to achieve the thing that you want, the thing that you're insecure about, right? To lose the insecurity and to get what you want. So that's a technique that can help you, 
all right, that can help you a lot. A lot of people will just try to visualize all the good feelings of achieving something, but if the pain or potentiality for pain outweighs even just by a little bit, even if it's just a little bit of pain, a lot of times the brain and your motivation systems will not, you'll, you will not fire like you want them to so that you'll be motivated to achieve the thing you want to achieve. You know, so you're, you're going to avoid going to the gym. You're going to avoid, um, you know, pick, going and trying out different clothes on, you know, trying if you're a female, doing different makeup, you know, trying a different look, you know, getting out there and approaching people. You're going to avoid all the things you need to do to have that thing you want because of the potential pain. So if you focus on the pain of not doing the things, then that can trick your brain into making you want to do the things that you need to do, if that makes sense, right? And this isn't just attractiveness or how you feelings about how you look. I mean, this could be anything you're trying to achieve. Let's say you're trying to start up a business, but you have insecurities about the outcome. You, you, you've never started a business before. You aren't sure, you know, you're, you're, you're worried about the direction because you're worried about the financial risk. You're afraid to lose the current financial state that you're in. So you don't want to take the risk to, to increase your financial state and so on and so on and so on. So you can focus on the pain of not starting the business, like being in a dead end job for the rest of your life, you know, and so on and so forth, right? Not having, being constantly in financial distress, not being able to afford the things, the lifestyle you want. You focus on the things that are the negative, the painful things, and sometimes that can project you into doing the right amount of actions to achieving your goal. And that's just general goals, some tips on goal achieving goals, but that's also a way of overcoming insecurity as well. So insecurity is not just something that you're going to meditate away or positively think away, or I'm going to go, I'm going to be alpha now and, and just get rid of it, Okay. Insecurity is something that you're going to need to find out what it is that's causing the insecurity, which one of those three items I mentioned, and attack it with action. And then get to, you want to be able to get to a point where you're outcome independent about those actions. So a very alpha leader type of a person has outcome independence, all right? And what that means is outcome independence doesn't mean that you don't want anything or you don't desire anything. Outcome independence means that you have confidence in your abilities enough where you know you will overcome and get what you want despite circumstances and behaviors of others that are out of your control, you know? So if you're outcome independent about, let's say, launching a new product or whatever, okay, that means if it fails or if you run into hiccups or problems, you're confident about your abilities of shifting gears, changing your marketing, doing what you need to do, and coming out on top. You know, If you're outcome independent about, let's say, women, for example, because this is a relationship channel also, right? You're confident about you know, outcome independent. It doesn't mean you don't desire a particular woman. It just means that if she rejects you or if she turns out to flake, be a flake or if things just don't work out, you're confident in your ability to find somebody else to be able to move on, to be better off from whatever happens in that, in that dating scenario or relationship with that person. You see what I mean? It, outcome independence is, you know, you are knowing you're going to succeed and get what you want because you have confidence in your abilities despite circumstances that are out of your control or other people's behaviors, which you cannot control. So you want to get to a point where you're at that level. Because when you're at that level, your mind and your behavior is just in control and on top of everything. That's that alpha behavior. I mean, that true alpha behavior that true leadership behavior, that mental stability that people rely on comes from at outcome independence and a feeling of that. But if you're insecure, you know, you're not going to have that outcome independence. So you need to figure out what you're insecure about, okay, why the insecurity is there and attack the problem, which attack the cause through actions, all right, and in 
seeing results and reframing your thought process based on those actions so the, that insecurity turns around and gets and turns into confidence. All right, that's that's the secret. So I'm already too long on this video. It's gonna keep it like five minutes, but that's a lot of information for you. So share it with your friends and thanks for the support. Take care.